I'd like to call the March 17th, 2022 Airport Commission meeting to order. Will the airport manager please call the roll? Uh, Eoff. Toutfest? Here. Olson? Here. Bias? Here. Stenga? Here. Do you have a quorum? Uh, approval of agenda. Are there any changes to the agenda? Are there any objections to approving the agenda? Hearing none, the agenda is approved. Approval of the December 16th, 2021 regular meeting minutes. Are there any changes to the minutes? Are there any objections to approving the minutes? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. Scheduled public comments and presentations, there are none. Action items, selection of chair and vice chair. May I have a nomination for the position of chair? I nominate James Stenga. Is there a second? Second. Are there any other nominations? Are there any objections to selecting Commissioner Stenga as chair for 2022? Hearing none, Commissioner Stenga is the 2022 Airport Commission Chair. May I have a nomination for the position of Vice Chair? I'll nominate Commissioner Bias. Is there a second? Ms. Charlene Topfest, I'll second. Are there any other nominations? Are there any objections to selecting Commissioner Bias as Vice Chair for 2022? Hearing none, Commissioner Bias is the 2022 Airport Commission Vice Chair. Six, reports, Airport Manager. Thank you, Chair Stenga. Um, in the agenda, we've got, uh, I've got a few items noted there. The first one being snow removal. Um, I, I believe uh, Airport Commission received my email from a while back um, regarding snow removal at the airport. Um, just like in town in the streets, um, it's been a tough year at the airport as well. Um, you know, per my, uh, per my last report, um, we have received uh, a few complaints um, citywide and at the airport. Um, we also, you know, I was also notified by the FAA uh, about a, a formal complaint that, that uh, somebody made to FAA regarding our snow removal efforts um, and the... Um, the accusation that we were using airport obligated equipment on, on city streets, um, which you know I assured FAA was not the case, um, that certainly um, our level of service has, has been difficult to uh, keep up at the airport as, as streets, but that uh, we were not leaving uh, unsafe conditions you know, on the runway and taxiway. Some of the apron areas and tie down areas, it, it, there were some times it took us a while to get there, but. Um, and then 100% um, we do not use airport obligated equipment outside the airport. Um, most likely the case is that uh, folks might see equipment working at the airport and see that same equipment working on the streets and, and that's because we very routinely supplement airport uh, efforts with streets equipment. So the few pieces of airport obligated equipment um, is a lot of times insufficient for uh, a timely um, maintenance effort at the airport. So we've got streets, crews, and uh, equipment at the airport. So that, that's probably the case. So um, just wanted to bring that back in front of the, the commission, let them know that, uh, that there has been some frustration at the airport. Um, you know, the administration's um, intention is to improve communication. I think that's going to be a huge thing, letting folks know where we're at and, and when we get out there. And then also, um, bringing back before the commission before next winter an official policy um, that that uh, commission can um, adopt uh, that we can publish and put on our website and put on the pilots lounge just so that everybody has a firm understanding of uh, you know what our our policies and procedures are and priorities um, and that's going to take some thought and and, um, and and figuring out what what works best um, and to a certain degree, some flexibility is, is important too, um, you know, based on the type of storm, the type of snow that we're getting, the frequency, uh, you know, the back-to-backs really is what hurt us and all agencies. I mean, you guys have probably seen in the news 
Anchorage and other places really struggling to keep up with snow removal. Um, so it's, it's just been a, a tough winter. Um, in addition to that, you know, we are currently evaluating, you know, all of our snow removal cities at uh, snow removal efforts at the city uh, to include um, buildings and uh, utilities and streets, airport, you know, um, we're looking at um, what would it entail to contract out more of that work to the private sector? Um, what would it cost to bring on additional operators or employees um, full time, part time? things of that nature. So a, really a comprehensive look at uh, snow removal efforts across the city, what it costs us, how we do it, are there ways we can do it better, cheaper, more efficiently, um, or is it simply have times changed and expectations have changed? You know, we recognize that that's, that may be the case too. Um, and, you know, uh, I think historically our small airport has really um, prided ourselves on you know, how efficiently we can run an airport in, in a small city. And I think we still do that, and we may still be able to do that, but it, it may be that, you know, uh, user expectations have changed. And maybe not. And, and maybe it's, it's, uh, it's all about outreach and communication so that folks know when we will and won't be there. Uh, so the good news is, you know, we're, we're starting that right now, even though it's still, you know, things are still, it's still winter. Um, but every intention is uh, to have... Um, Will possibly a work session or other effort to, that results in a, in a written policy that we can publish and point to when when concerns arise. So um, that's that's my uh, report on on snow removal. Uh, current conditions are great out there. I, I'm sure you guys are aware. Um, Scott and his team were able to jump on the airport when we had that brief warm spell and really peel some pack up. Again, the challenge <laughs> to early season with. Uh, ski planes versus not, um, and, and that's stuff we can address in the in the policy, in the uh, uh, snow and ice control policy too, is um, accommodating you know ski strip access and stuff like that. But I think things are pretty pretty uh, black out there right now, and in, in pretty good shape, and folks are enjoying uh, the good flying weather we've had lately. Um, I think that is all of my report on the snow removal. If there uh, are any questions, I'd be happy to take them. I got maybe more of a idea than a than a question. You know, being the probably the younger person in the room here, um, well, social media is pretty huge nowadays, and maybe an idea is that we could put together some kind of a Solana Airport social media page where you can post updates like that, so that the outreach is a little more available to most people. I mean, even even most generations nowadays have some form of social media. Um, and then you could also post like the policy so it's pretty black and white so when people have complaints and you're within your policy, there's really nothing that you can do. There's nothing they can do. You just make it as black and white as possible. Um, any other kind of updates? I know you guys do notums when, when things are going down, but um, maybe just another avenue to go down. I don't know if the city itself has any kind of a social media page that you could branch another one off of and then yeah. go from there. Not to put a bunch of work on the city, but... No, that's a great idea. Um, we do, we do have various social media pages, and I've been um, really good at keeping <laughs> keeping my access out of that uh, thus far. But I think that uh, maybe an airport specific one that users could could subscribe to. That's a great idea, and uh, we'll we'll look into that. Uh, okay, next item: tie down lease lot update. Pretty, this will be a brief one. There's no significant changes uh, this quarter um, from 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 previous. Um, we you know still get the occasional inquiry about um, improvements at the airport. Uh, nothing nothing significant to report in, from from the last quarter, uh, other than the uh, the replat that was heard at the last airport commission meeting is still with the uh, the borough. Um, that was uh, the commission. Uh, recommending approval of the combination of lot 815 and 821. So that's still just in the bureaucratic process of uh, planning, um, but should be complete sometime soon, I would imagine. Um, the next item, wind vane, the Doc Isaac plane. As, as uh, you are all aware, the uh, possibly the snow and ice conditions and then just time with uh, wearing out of, of parts to the wind vane, uh, you can see it on our on our image up here, fell off the pedestal. Um, 
our intention is to uh, safely transport that to uh, our city facility and, and keep it um, safe and good condition until we can figure out how to uh, uh, reinstall it and potentially uh, conduct repairs and partner, uh, collaborate with some, some entities that want to assist with uh, making repairs and, and then getting it back up to where it is. I think that all the feedback I've received to date has been that it is an iconic um, um, fixture at our airport and that uh, I've received pretty much unanimous like um, desire to see it reinstalled. So uh, from, from my perspective, and Scott Sundberg's and the administration, that's, that's what we're going to endeavor to do. Um, pertaining to our first item with snow removal and, and uh, uh, busyness right now, we, we, haven't, uh, we haven't embarked on that yet, but we will. We'll move that to our, our shop down the street on down Funny River, keep it safe and, and cover it as needed so that we can get some repairs and get it back up. So I think I also sent uh, the Airport Commission uh, some of the information um, from uh, uh, Rieger that uh, – uh, history of that plane, which is pretty neat, and um, we'll get it back up at some point. I'll report back more later when I know what that process is going to look like and the timeline for it. Yeah, I actually had uh, run into the Reaper this last time they were down on the road. Great. Hope they're all excited. Yeah, you know, we don't know. I want to get that back. Everybody does that. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, grant opportunities. I'm, I'm flying through these things because they're they're pretty simple, and um, uh, this item's just uh, to let the commission know that uh, with all the federal funding uh, out there and continuing to emerge, uh, one component of that is uh, the uh, uh, airport infrastructure grants, uh, which is a subset under the uh, uh, Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, uh, commonly known as the Bipartisan Infrastructure law. Uh, it includes funding for a number of different uh, programs. Probably the biggest and most notable is, is geared towards um, uh, airport terminals and towers. That's uh, been, been the headline lately. Um, we're looking into, into opportunities. Um, it's not, it doesn't look great. Um, the uh, the focus is on passenger terminals, and, and they pretty specifically define uh, what a passenger terminal is. Um, you know, I had been kicking around some concepts about um, if, if there were some funding opportunities to build uh, what may be in the future a passenger terminal, but in the meantime uh, works as, as an FBO uh, facility. You see if there's a way to, to, to capture those funds. Uh, to date, it doesn't really fit with with our airport as a as a non certificated, um, you know, no no passenger service uh, type airport at the moment. But we're we're still looking into that grant and others and trying to to, to see if we can uh, take advantage of funding opportunities that are that are coming through. And certainly, um, our intention would would be to bring back uh, anything that we uh, identified worth pursuing to the commission for for uh, your recommendation on on moving forward. Um, most notably because, you know, any uh, non-routine type uh, O&M efforts out there would require the airport commission to weigh in on, particularly if it, if it changed the nature of our airport, right? You know, building a, uh, building a terminal, would we would certainly want uh, the commission to, to provide feedback on that. And it, do it doesn't look like that's uh, really an achievable option at this point, but the point of my uh, – Airport manager report on grant opportunities was to bring that to the uh, commission's attention because it has been in the news and it is a big chunk of money, uh, you know, $5 billion with a B to upgrade, modernize, and rebuild our nation's airport terminals um, and airport owned towers. That's the other segment of it is, is towers, which we. Uh, unfortunately, well, if we put, a, put somebody in that thing with a radio. <laughs> Perhaps we could finagle <laughs> the, the reinstallation of the, our biplane as an airport tower. So, um, yeah, point being, the grant opportunities abound at the airport and not the cities doing it. We're, we're ensconced in, in trying to uh, take advantage of these federal funds where appropriate, where it meets our, our community needs, not spend frivolously, but, you know, take advantage of it. And um, 
you know, we'll continue to do that. Uh, myself, uh, the city manager, uh, probably the utility manager and, and the assistant to the city manager will probably attend the April 11th, we will be attending the April 11th um, infrastructure symposium in Anchorage uh, that's sponsored by uh, Senator Murkowski and we'll have uh, a lot of the federal agencies available to uh, discuss and go over the grant opportunities that are coming down the pipe through the various programs. So um, we're doing our best to stay atop of what's available and what's coming and then try to align uh, you know, our needs with, uh, with the funding opportunities as they come out. So. Uh, with that, I'll, I'll take a, a pause um, if there's any questions before going on to CIP projects. I'm hearing none. The, the next report, and I do have one more after that, but the CIP projects, um, I just I brought this up at our last meeting, um, noting the continual update on, on funding opportunities. We want to make sure that our CIP projects are tuned up and accurate so that we're uh, prepared to pounce on, on funding opportunities as they come available. Um, at the last meeting, I kind of went over those um, existing CIP projects. Um, pertaining to my last conversation, I don't have any um, grant opportunities to pursue or, or update, uh, but I wanted to note to the commission that um, I will reach out and attempt to schedule a special meeting if necessary, and, and hopefully uh, folks can um, attend if we, if we have that. But I think that, um, you know, X number of years ago, we moved our meetings uh, to quarterly, and it's been efficient and effective, I think, for our airport. Um, but this was one, one area where we, we all noted that it, if, if needed, we, we would have a, uh, a special meeting to, to be nimble on on our needs. That, this may be one. If there is a funding opportunity that we think is going to be uh, a good fit for our airport, I'll, I'll um, through the clerk's office, reach out and schedule that special meeting. Uh, the last item that is uh, in my report that's, that I'm going to report on that, um, that I've uh, made some developments since the packet deadline that's not in there is, is delinquent accounts at, at the airport. And uh, I touched base on this in the past and uh, unless there are objections from the commission, my intention is to uh, proceed with filing a, uh, a lien on uh, three aircraft at the airport. Um, one, uh, the owner is, is of Connecticut, and uh, the plane is uh, November 6127 Bravo. Uh, they currently have a, a balance of $2,275. Um, we, we have a, uh, a narrative on the payment history, and uh, it's, pre it's pretty evident that it uh, is maintaining a balance and getting worse, so we're going to proceed based on the attor our city attorney's recommendation on uh, the process for filing a lien and embark on that. The second one, uh, the aircraft November uh, 8715 Bravo of Kenai. Uh, has a current balance of $1,710. Um, this has been going on for several years as well. Uh, and then the third one, uh, November 2790 Papa uh, of Soldatna, um, has a current balance of $1,305. Um, all three of these accounts, the aircraft is at our airport and has been ongoing for several, several, quite a few years. So, um, we have exhausted our level of outreach. Um, these folks are not responding to letters and pink slips and notes left on the aircraft. So I feel like we've done a, a pretty um, good faith effort in uh, the administrative outreach to get these folks to pay and that the next step is, is um, going through our attorney to officially file that lien. Perhaps the official looking paperwork will in, uh, um, entice them to come in and pay. If not, we'll, we'll continue down that path. So unless there's uh, objection from the commission, uh, probably next week we'll, we'll start to fill out those lean, uh, lean paperwork. Uh, the, uh, associated with that, uh, you know, our attorney has noted that um, we can move the aircraft, aircraft to prevent its unauthorized removal if feasible. Um, we can also immobilize the plane in place without damaging it if, if that's 
uh, if that's an option. Um, those are things that, that I'll look into. You know, in the past, we used to prop lock, and we, we have abandoned that policy for obvious reasons. Um, so we're going to all continue to look into whether or not it's in our best interest to somehow secure the aircraft, meaning if we, if we file this lien uh, and they choose to just relocate their aircraft, we essentially lose our um, uh, collateral to enforce that lien. Uh, but perhaps with these current balances that, you know, we'll deal with that bridge when we come to it if that's, if that's what happens. So. Right. A load of replacement. Right. And the guys in the NBL can move it. Yep. So they raise the check. Right. I like that. Uh, and you're not touching the aircraft that way either. Right. And not touching the aircraft has been our preference. Yeah. Uh, that concludes my airport manager report. Okay. Commissioner Chair report. I don't have a report, I do have a comment. Uh, going through the property taxes, notices from the borough, that it's been received on the lease locks out there. The ones I have, the ones people I know of have, have gone up over 300% on the uh, land only, not the buildings. I had a meeting yesterday with the uh, head of the assessing department, brought this to their attention. Uh, it's my understanding that lease lot real estate value should be to the formula where they base it on the lease itself and the rate of the lease and the longevity of the re lease. And that's been in the past. She, she's gonna review what I brought to her and get back to me. But if uh, I think there's been some mistakes made, there may not be, but a 300 and some incre percent increase on the lease lot land in one year has some agitated people. Uh, I was told by the borough that one person called the borough and was very angry. I don't know who that person, doesn't matter. But she is gonna get back to me and see if there's been a mistake in the calculation since it may or may not have been hand-entered into the borough assessing system. So I will keep you informed on what I learned. But that is a detriment in my opinion any leaseholders. Yes, th thank you for the report. Um, I'll, I'll note that uh, I did receive an inquiry from a lessee a week ago or so, maybe a couple weeks ago, inquiring about if, if the city uh, participated in, in those uh, assessing efforts, and, and I told him we do not. Um, we report building permit data mm -hmm. to, to the borough quarterly, I believe, um, which is based on a, uh, either evaluation um, of a project. But that's, that's current, current construction projects, nothing to do with le uh, airport lease, As leases. As an example, so. one lease lot it went from 5900 to $45,000. Yeah. That's... Interesting. Me, yeah. me, I'm not happy. Yeah. I have two lots out there that are side by side that are 100% different. Just, the, just the land. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that uh, if, that uh, you have made that inquiry, and I'll be interested to and hear I'll, more. I'll let you know what Excellent. they come up with. Okay. Uh, because it should be based on a formula, mm -hmm. and it is, and they agreed with that. I don't know. Exactly. You know, and it's when you sign the lease, the length of the lease, how long you've had it, square footage, and everything. Uh, but there are some pretty serious discrepancies in the evaluation of the land. And I think it needs to be followed up with. Yeah. That's the end of my comments. Uh, maintenance manager comment, report from uh, manager Scott Sundberg. He is not here. Does he have a report? Uh, he, uh, I spent some time with him today. Um, his, his report was mostly um, geared towards existing conditions, current field conditions right now, which I touched on previously that, that uh, there's a lot of blacktop out there. Um, he is in the um, 
hiring stage uh, for another operator. One of our operators moved back to Anchorage, his former uh, maintenance job in, in uh, Anchorage. They offered, I made him an offer he can't refuse, uh, probably with the snow removal efforts this year. Oh, so, crazy. I tell you. yeah, so, uh, so we've been down an operator for a large part of this, uh, not a large part, but for a while. Uh, so he is in the process of, of hiring a, another operator, which is good. And um, um, he and I are collaborating on this snow removal um, discussion about op options and opportunities, city side and airport side. You know, do we hire a temporary operator for the winter that focuses just on the airport? Pros and cons of that. It works great if you have a repeat winter guy, but it's not so great if you've got a newbie, you know, um, every year. Um, there's also some, I don't want to say liability, but liability and responsibility. You are in equipment with avionics, radios, and aircraft movement areas and safety areas on the runway. Um, so, you know, um, and then the condition you leave it in with berms and where you where the snow goes. Um, it, yeah, we want to make sure that we're doing it right. So it's, we're, everything's on the table, whether uh, even contracting opportunities out there. And, and so, anyway, uh, I'll, I'm, I'll leave it at that. Um, that's my report on his behalf. I believe she's still in her office working right now. We're, we're, she's hopping, hopping to it with uh, all the grant opportunities as well. Any public comments? Any council comments from Council Member Parker? Uh, council Member Parker informed me that she would be unable to attend this meeting. Um, I appreciate the heads up, and I let her know that I would uh, send her a synopsis so that she can um, report to the uh, full uh, council at the next regularly scheduled council meeting. And last, any commissioner comments? No comment. Likewise. Okay. The next meeting of the Sabatin Airport Commission will be held on June 16th at 5.30 p.m. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>